Needing to see a doctor in Germany can be a difficult and challenging task, but it doesn't have to be. If you're like me, confused when I first arrived on how this whole doctor system works in terms of how do you make an appointment, do I need to have a family doctor assigned to my family, um, how much does it cost, and all these things, then don't worry because this video is made for you. We will do our very best to detangle the doctor system in Germany and hopefully at the end you will not be so confused. <laughs> hey, my name is Jen and I'm from Guatemala. And my name is Yvonne and I'm German. And together we're from simplegermany.com where we create English content to to empower internationals to settle into life in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. Let's first start by talking about the most common doctors and specialists in Germany and the very famous house ads, which is literally the family doctor. Correct. Yes, the house ads is what you will hear everywhere is equal to the general practitioner or family doctor and pretty much the one that you go to for smaller illnesses, the cold, um, needing to get like a sick leave, which, which we'll touch later on in the video, but also for blood analysis, vaccination, so pretty much the general itty bitty of, of health. Yeah. <laughs> And also to answer the question is that once you land in Germany, do you need to register yourself with the house doctor or not? No, <laughs> you actually only need, get one when you need one. So whenever you're feeling sick, then you Google pretty much where we, we will go into more details on how to find a doctor. Um, and then you just pretty much make an appointment when you actually need one. And by default, the first doctor that you go to can become your family doctor if you want it to, because Correct. it's also allowed if you don't like the doctor or the doctor doesn't speak your language for you to change general doctors um, often. Yeah, so since I've been living in Düsseldorf, that's now 10 years, um, I've actually had three different house doctors and you know, I jumped around a little bit until I found one that I was happy with, but also to kind of like trial and error um, a little bit because you don't always get an appointment on your first try. And that's pretty much one of the big questions also is like, do I need a family doctor? Um, well, it's always easier to get an appointment if you're already registered with them, meaning if you've been there before. So if that's a thing that concerns you, then you could pretty much just visit a doctor to say like, hey, I just want to have a house doc, a house arts. Um, so next time I need something, I can come back to you. That could also be a strategy, but usually it's not done that way. Yes. And I would say if I go like that to the doctor, my doctor will be like, but what do you need? I think yeah. would probably be the next answer. Like, don't come here wasting my time in a way. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> so I wouldn't necessarily recommend to go that route. I would say get the doctor when you need the doctor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so now that we got the house ads out of the way, the question is, how do you go to a specialist? So there are two buckets, the specialist that you can go to without a referral and the ones that you actually need a referral or an Uberweisung from your house ads. So let's start the first with the ones that you don't need a referral. They can just make an appointment meant with directly. Yes, and those would be very typically the Kinderarzt, which is the pediatrician, the HNO, which stands for Hals, Nasen, Ohrenarzt, which is the ear, nose and throat doctor, the Frauenarzt, which is a very colloquial way of saying gynecologist in German, the Hautarzt, which is the skin doctor or dermatologist, the Orthopäde, orthopedist, although sometimes you need a referral here, but not always, the Zahnarzt, which is the dentist and the Augenarzt, which is the eye doctor. And now for the bucket that you absolutely need an Überweisung for, meaning a referral from your house arts, is cardiologist, cardiologe, radiologist, radiologe, neurologist, neurologe, psychologist, is a psychologe or the psychotherapeut, or, and the physical therapist. The physiotherapeut, which is not really a doctor, but you still need a referral to if you want to yeah, have like physical therapy. And of course, we cannot talk about doctors without actually talking about the difference between private and public health insurance. Yes. And that also plays a role in whether you go directly or not directly to certain doctors. Correct. Now, when you uh, look for a doctor, you will very often see the um, kind of like disclaimer or just the name Privat Praxis. And Privat Praxis, uh, we call doctor offices praxis. And uh, that means it's purely for um, people who are insured privately with the health insurance. If it just says regular praxis, it's for everyone that is also publicly insured. That is very important to distinguish because if you are publicly insured, don't try to make an appointment with a privat praxis because they'll just ask you and then say, I'm sorry, we don't take you. Or you could also go to a privat praxis and pay yourself. But that could become quite costly depending on what kind of treatment you're looking for. Yes, another word that I've seen used for public health insurance is Kasse, no? Correct, yes. So it could be just Praxis or Kasse. 
Well, no, no, it wouldn't be that the office wouldn't be called Kasse. It ah. would just be said for Kassen Patienten ah. um, because uh, the colloquial or the official word, I don't even know which one it is, for publicly health insured people, uh, we would be Kassen Patient, mm. like, a, like, a, like Kassen Patient. Okay. Okay. So that's a very good distinction as well. So now that we distinguish between whether, like what kind of doctor you need to look for, whether you're private or public health insured, <laughs> now we can talk about how do you actually make an appointment with the doctor. And that's pretty simple and straightforward. There are three ways or three most popular ways that you can do this. Number one is that through your health insurance, most of them have actually like a portal that you can log in and they have a list of doctors that you can make an appointment with. Yeah, it's a doctor finder tool where you can yeah. just put in your zip code or city and they will offer you the doctors that are available. Um, some have like the private health insurance like Autonova, they have an even more concierge service where they actually not only find the, appoint the doctor for you, but make the appointment for you. So those are options to use, which we have actually never used. Some very interesting. I only learned about the service through Simple Germany, to be honest. <laughs> um, so that would not be the way that I do it. But then again, I'm German and that is a bit different. Yes, I agree. The second option, which is the one that we have probably I do the most, is to use an app called Doctolib or there's another one called Jamda. Yameda. Yameda. <laughs> Jamda, I think it's another <laughs> thing. doesn't matter. But through Doctolib, it's really cool because you have a phone application and it's a desktop application. And there you can also, again, it's a doctor finder that you put your zip code and it shows you the the doctors and also you can filter by language and there's not only English speaking doctors but uh, we've seen everything Arabic Ten Hungarian languages, French I think. yeah uh, Spanish I mean pretty much anything well not anything but um, more than English yes more than English that's true not just that yeah that's a very fair point so that is actually a very cool thing because you can uh, book your appointment through the app it reminds you as well so if you <laughs> sometimes I forget that I have a doctor's appointment and I get a reminder and some doctors through the service also provide video calls so you don't even need to go to the office directly but you can log into the Dr. Lib app and then you can have a video call with them. I had a video call once with the doctor and it worked pretty well. I mean, it was a bit hectic to be honest, but at the end, the result was very nice and I didn't have to leave my home. <laughs> And the third option that you can do, which is actually my favorite, uh, but then again, that's maybe because I'm confident in German, is to Google for doctors and then just call them up, literally um, call them, ask if they have an appointment anytime soon, uh, depending on the reason why I want to see them, which we will get into a little bit later in the video. And that would be another way. Yes, a very important thing to point out here is that when you call a doctor's office, if the doctor speaks another language, most likely the people or the staff working in the front desk, they do not. So even though the doctor might speak English and if you call and expect to be able to make an appointment in English, most likely that won't be able to be possible. You will need to use German to make an appointment with a doctor just to keep that in mind. So that's why maybe something like Dr. Lib, where you kind of don't need to speak to anyone, you can make the appointment through. It's definitely the uh, more stress-free way. Yes, I agree. <laughs> but if you are very good in German, be one. I think it's more than enough. It's more, it's easier to make an appointment with a doctor. And if, uh, and if you don't understand, just very gently ask, uh, can you repeat that again? Or in easier words, I do that all the time. And then it's... Can you das bitte wiederholen? Yeah, genau. <laughs> or oder <Yeah>. einfach wiederholen. <laughs> Einfacher wiederholen. Oder nochmal bitte. Yeah. <laughs> Now, to set some expectations of what will happen when you go to the doctor, we will jump into the section called what happens when you go to the doctor. <laughs> what does a doctor visit in Germany look like? Yes. So number one is that you need to actually arrive when you have the appointment and uh, you will arrive at the front desk. And there again, you will have the staff that most likely won't speak English, but or very broken English. That has been my experience at least, at least. And they will ask you, first of all, for your last name <laughs> and your Geburtsdatum is very important. Your birth date. Your birth date. That way they will find you in the system. And the next question will be, can you please show me your um, insurance, insurance card? card? And they have these little machines that you need to put the insurance card in and it will read the chip and then they will tell you we can take it out and then go sit at the waiting area. Most likely, yes, most likely you will be sent to the waiting room where it is kind of like this unwritten, unwritten? Yeah. Thing? Unwritten German rule that whenever you enter a room, a closed room where other people are in, you greet them. Um, I think there have been a lot of talk about this. It's so weird because Germans never say hi, but if they go to a doctor's waiting room, they always say hi. That's kind of like the reason because it's a closed room. So you greet everyone, guten tag, you sit in your chair and you look at a magazine or not and you wait. Wait, I have a disclaimer for this as well. If it's your first time going to this doctor, most likely before you're sent to the waiting room, you will receive a form. Sometimes it's by paper, sometimes it's on a 
an iPad, sometimes it's in German, sometimes it's in English. <laughs> it really depends. Where you need to fill out your medical history or your an anamnese, anamnese um, for them to have an idea and put you in the database. Uh, if it's fully in German, what I do is take out my phone and with Google Translate and the camera, I translate the questions because to be honest, some medical terms, I have no idea what they are. Yeah. And even if then I have the English word and I still don't know what they are, then I Google them. Yeah. <laughs> you usually have 10, 15 minutes to fill out the form, depending on the doctor. Yes. Yeah. And then the waiting time highly, highly varies from doctor and the visiting times. Um, if it's a scheduled appointment or like a last minute appointment. So I have waited at doctors for two minutes, like really smooth. It's like, wow, this is, this is cool. Because usually I would say you would expect the waiting time. And I've waited 45 minutes with an appointment. So it really varies. And that's kind of like also why there are three doctors that I tried and not just one. <laughs> I mean, house arts. House arts, yeah. <laughs> so depending on the type of visit that you have, you will see the doctor or not, actually. And uh, it, let's say, for example, you're just going there for a blood, uh, how do you say this, for a blood test, so they will need to take blood out of you. Most likely you will not see the doctor per se. So it's important if you want to speak with the doctor when you make an appointment for, appointment for such things is that you ask if you can also talk with the doctor. And that will usually be in specific times because the doctor does not always speak to people. And that will be during the Sprechstunde, literally the talking hour. Yeah. <laughs> but now once you do see the doctor because you had a general appointment, not just for a blood test or, or, or Vaccination other vaccinations or, or anything, um, you see the doctor and then you have to usually explain your symptoms and your reason why you're there. And uh, you should be very precise um, and very kind of like um, clear in what's happening. Now, don't expect a lot of sympathy from German doctors. They are usually very indifferent, professional and like straight to the point. So they will, depending on what you have, like let's say you have a cold or like a cough, they will listen to your lungs um, from the back and then maybe look into your you know, throat or ears, the typical thing. Um, we also once recently actually had lower back pain, then they, we lay down and like moved our legs to see whether it's actually something dangerous or not. So the general exams, but really with little emotion and quite suck, suck, quite like fast paced. And it's quite common that they just, you know, send you off and say, ah, oh, it's normal. Um, ask you whether you need to, to be off work or not. Sometimes they actually ask you, sometimes they tell you, we'll talk about sick leave uh, later in the video. And that's pretty much it. Maybe give you some uh, prescription for medicine and send you off. And then sometimes you're like, whoa, and now what? Like I didn't really learn anything other than it's normal. So if you um, know your body and your medical history or whatsoever, and you have a certain goal in mind, you kind of need to ask for that. For example, um, with our lower back pain, um, I asked for physical therapy. Like I asked, is it possible in this case, you need to ask for manuelle therapy. Is it possible to see a physiotherapist to help me with the, you know, to ease the muscles. And then I was like, yes, of course, here is the prescription. But it wasn't offered to me directly. And the same with your low iron. Yes. Ah, okay, I should talk now. Okay, yeah, <laughs> the same with my low iron. I usually have low iron and then it's, it has been a hassle actually to find out the reason for it. Um, but this is not a video about my medical history. But anyway, so um, I, it's pretty much the conclusion is that you have to fight for what you want in a way. I think this is generally speaking for any doctor in the world. I've also heard experiences from people in the US that still, you know, things like that happen or in Guatemala. So you kind of have to know what you want and ask for it. And exactly. that requires most of the time also maybe doing research. I don't know if this is like a dangerous zone online or whatnot. But with my eye and I had a list of things that I wanted to be checked and then I proposed that to the doctor and then she was like okay this makes sense this doesn't make sense this is like bullshit completely <laughs> um, and then based on the things that made sense we started doing some exams uh, and then every exam came with a different result until we find out the reason for it uh, which now we know it but before that I would just receive the prescription for iron and then be sent off like this is normal in women in your Come back in three months. Now if they're done uh, the talk and the checkup with the doctor is done then you depending on what the next steps are and you for example need a follow-up appointment or need a prescription then you walk back to the reception to the front desk and wait for the prescription or make that appointment if there is nothing to follow up on you literally just walk out of the office you don't need to go back to reception and pay anything you don't ever pay anything at the doctor um yeah i would say you never i've never paid anything with a doctor private or publicly insured 
Yes. So the only thing you say is schönen Tag noch. Tschüss. <laughs> well, this is not the end of the video, by the way. <laughs> okay. Now, if you get a referral from your general doctor to go to a specialist, you need to know how that works. So this section is how do referrals work? Yes. And referrals in German doctor language means Überweisung. It's the same word as if you would send money, wire money somewhere. Um, so it's not the money transfer, but it's the medical patient, the transfer. patient transfer. Exactly. Überweisung. And um, to understand the system, Germany's medical system, at least with a public health insurance, works financially in four quarters, mm -hmm. the quarters of the year. So January to March, April to June, etc. Meaning an Überweisung is only valid within one quarter. So we had, for example, the case and learned the hard way that we got an Überweisung on, let's say, June 30th, but we only got an appointment with a specialist on July 21st. And that did not work. Like that Überweisung was already outdated and didn't work. We weren't allowed to see the specialist. So if that is the case, you have to go back to the house arts or whoever sends the referral and get the Überweisung on the 1st of July. So it's valid for the rest of the quarter. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Very important thing to know is that if you need to have a medical procedure done at the hospital, you yes or yes need an Überweisung from the doctor. And interesting enough, I mean, I think that's same for worldwide, there are certain hospitals as well in Germany that are specialized in certain things. When you do research, if you need to go to a hospital, you can ask either your house ads for a recommendation of which ones would they recommend. <laughs> or the, the doctor that sends the referral. Yes, very good point. Or you can also Google for hospitals and then on their website, they love marketing themselves if they are specialists in a, in a certain <laughs> way. So you will find out sooner or later. Yes. Uh, regarding your yes or yes, if you are privately health insured, you may not need a Überweisung, like a referral. You may also just go to the hospital. However, I would argue it probably makes sense to have, if it's not the proper paper advising, at least a referral letter from the doctor, kind of like helping the hospital understand why are you going there and what is your need. Yes, so this is for scheduled procedures and things. What happens if it's an emergency though? So we will talk now how to handle emergencies, medical emergencies in Germany. <laughs> Correct, yes. So first of all, very important, the medical emergency number in Germany, is the, oh, in Europe per se, is the 112. And with the 112, you ask for medical help or fire uh, fighters, fire help also. It's the same number, yes. And uh, to distinguish, in Germany, actually, you have the ambulance, the Krankenwagen, and you also have the Notarzt, which is literally a emergency doctor. So that would be an actual doctor and not just paramedics like in the ambulance. That is super interesting. Luckily, I have never asked, had the need to ask for um, these kind of services. Uh, I just remember from TV, watching a TV show from the US called 911, and usually it's just paramedics that would show yeah, up to Or Grey's Anatomy. Or Grey's Anatomy, also just paramedics. But rarely have I seen like a doctor be part of the emergency um, first call, first responders. Yeah. So well, that's pretty on the cool. streets in Germany, you usually see two different vehicles, the big Krankenwagen, the ambulance, or um, a smaller regular car that is also like the orange white. And that is usually then the doctor. Can we please just say how Germans refer to uh, the ambulances? Ta -ta -ta -ta. Ta -ta. <laughs> that is so crazy. Topic for a different video. Anyways, <laughs> so if it's an emergency, so let's first classify what is an emergency. So I think it's very clear, but in general, a medical emergency, it's anything that cannot wait for you to see the doctor on a Monday. Let's say it's a Friday evening, the weekends, usually doctors are closed. And so you would need to wait two days and that's just impossible. Right. Now, same as everywhere else, you only call an ambulance if you're unable to move yourself to a hospital full stop. Yes. Like, yeah. And you would only visit the ER in Germany and a German hospital is called Notaufnahme. So emergency registration. Um, and very important here, if you, in your example, Jen, uh, if you are, it's a Friday evening, like you just said, mm -hmm. and you uh, are experiencing a cold with high fever, how did you proceed and how you should not do it? So how I proceeded, because I had no clue how this whole thing worked, is that, of course, the uh, doctor was closed because, funny enough, doctors are closed. Well, not funny. It's generally speaking <laughs> Wednesday. E I mean, every evening, of course, also Wednesday and Friday afternoons and the weekends, of course. So I knew my next chance of an appointment was on a Monday. And I wanted some medical drugs, <laughs> no, just some pills to reduce my fever because it was really high and I was freaking out at home alone. So I went to the ER and I was like, hey, I have a cold and fever. I need help. And they pretty much told me, well, good for you. Um, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> we cannot. This give is you an ER. <laughs> we cannot give you a prescription for anything. So choose. And then I was like, what? So I went home crying pretty much. I, to be honest, I went home and I cried because I didn't know what who can help me in this situation. What should I do? 
until now, I actually know what I should have done. <laughs> so just to clarify, the ER is also only for um, things maybe that don't that are not a code that I really cannot wait to see a doctor, um, or where you need to, for example, get an X-ray. For example, we once went in a in a Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening to the ER because uh, Jen's finger got hurt playing soccer and we were scared it was broken, and that we didn't want to wait the next day. Um, to be able to have an x-ray. So that was a, you know, a reason for us to go to an ER. Another reason for us to go to the ER, funny story, is that on a Saturday, a bee stung my tongue. So there we also went to the ER because I was scared that my tongue would swell and pretty much kill me. <laughs> yes. And there we also went to the ER and they accepted me. They just kept me under observation. So these are real emergencies. Correct. So if you have a general cold and you just need a sick leave, suck it up and wait for Monday, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> if you need, uh, if you have a fever and you need drugs to lower it, you could go a contact a pharmacy, Apotheke, um, which there are always pharmacies open 24 hours. They're called Not Apotheke. I didn't know Emergency this. pharmacy. And how to find out, you can either Google it or you can walk up to your closest pharmacy. And there's always a sign in the door or in the window telling you which pharmacy is open at this time to then contact them. That is super interesting because what I learned now is that they take shifts in the neighborhood. So which pharmacy is going to be open and which uh, notfile or emergency cases or on, on call, so to speak. So this is how you could have gotten your pills that you want I for the ER too. I didn't know and the ER didn't inform me or I just was so obsessed with my fever and the shock that they didn't give me anything that I didn't pay attention. Another way that you can also get medicine, I don't know if 24-7 though, it's through now new services. One of them is Made, which is an app that you can also purchase um, through the app and they deliver it within 10, 15 minutes, it's I believe. It's over-the-counter medicine, which yes. I mean, an you don't need a prescription an for. I, ibuprofen 400, you can order through that. Yes. Um, and I think they're open until 11 p.m., but they're not in, they're only in big cities. Yes. And another one is, uh, what is this, apotheke.de? Um, There's tons of online uh, pharmacies, Easy Apotheke, Shop Apotheke, but they are not fast delivery. They take several days. Ah, okay. So either the Note Apotheke would be the way that I should have gone. That would have been probably the way I should have gone. Anyway, so luckily I didn't die that evening. <laughs> I survived and the next day was fine. But I was pretty much in shock of my experience. <laughs> now we'll talk about how to handle a sick leave in Germany. So first of all, it's very important to point out that in Germany, it's okay to be sick when you're sick. Um, it's okay to take time to recover as long as it's a legitimate reason. So by law, you need to actually provide your employer a sick note after three days of being sick, so on the fourth day. However, some employers reduce that time within the working contracts. So in your working contract, you should have a look for the word Arbeitsunfähigkeit, which pretty much means you're unable to work, uh, and see what is written there. Sometimes they reduce it to only one day, sometimes to two, and you need to adhere by what's in the contract. So how to handle unexpected sick leave? For example, you wake up in the morning feeling under the weather, unable to work. So the first thing that you actually do is you contact your employer. Now that is a very different scheme depending on your company and the culture. Uh, you could write them a WhatsApp, you could call them, you sometimes need to inform HR instead of your supervisor. So that you need to kind of like figure out on your own. I would advise maybe in the first real talk with your manager, you can ask how the procedure is handled just for you to know. Um, and that is the first step. Then if you just think it's going to last a day, you know, you can just rest. But if you think it's going to last longer and you want to see a doctor, it's time for you to call up or use Dr. Lip or whichever way to make a doctor's appointment. Yes, yeah, so if it's uh, if you're absolutely feeling under the weather, uh, by experience, you can call the doctor early in the morning when they actually open and with a very sick voice <laughs> and soft voice, uh, ask very kindly if they can see you that day. Usually doctors have a certain time slots where they accept emergency patients, let's call it. It's not really an emergency, but like... Uh, unannounced, like unannounced. unscheduled. Yes, that's a very that's a very better word. Uh, unscheduled um, patient, so that usually is in the morning. Some doctors only ask you to come by and then you have to wait in the waiting room until they have a chance to see you. We've had both uh, examples, but definitely the one thing to do, I think, is if you call up all happy and terpy, um, which I have done in the past, then they tell you, no, we don't have an appointment. And then I have called and actually sounded 
sick. I mean, I was sick. Again, yeah. this is really Be just for sick. you to, to know how you get that appointment if you really need it. Yes. Right? Um, and if you sound clogged up and you, you, you actually tell them your all your symptoms and that you really need to see them today, I've always been able to get an appointment. Yes. And then when you see the doctor, then they will examine you and based on their evaluation, they will provide a sick leave for an amount of days that they consider are appropriate. If a regular cold, this could be the remaining of the week if it's a Monday usually. Cause wow, or until the Wednesday, it depends. Or to, it depends on the severity of your symptoms again, so I'm, I'm lying. But anyways, at the end of the thing is that you're going to get three papers, which is the sick leave they're all come together and they're all different colors of course no they're yellow oh they're all yellow i think so well i don't really remember at the moment but anyways one of them needs to go to your employer and again you need to ask your employer how this needs to be handled for example i've had employers that need to mail the sick leave to hr department even though it's in the same building um, others you need to um, scan and just send through email take a picture a picture yeah. it highly depends the other one which i didn't know until recently is that you need to send it to your insurance <laughs> so the one for uh, for the employer it will say so yes. Vorlage für den Arbeitgeber. Yes, so. that is how you know that yes. is for your employer. Then the other one, it says Krankenkasse. And that's for your insurance. Exactly. Yeah. And there also depends on your insurance. In most cases, you have this online portal where you can log in and upload it there. And the other one is for you to keep for your records. Which is Arbeitnehmer. So one interesting thing I found about this uh, sick leaves is I had the case that I was sick once from a cold and I got written off for like the whole week. And let's say on a Thursday, I felt fine. So I showed up to the office and I'm like, oh, I'm fine. And the like girl at the reception was like, dude, what are you doing here? That is incorrect. You are allowed to go back to work. Ah, and she would say that I wasn't allowed to go back to work because I had a sick leave until Friday. So me working that day would pretty much mess up the whole system. No, you are allowed. You just need to inform all parties. Ah, so maybe it's a whole process. So the easiest way maybe is just to stay at home. <laughs> I mean, if you already have the sickly right. <laughs> We're not promoting inappropriate behavior here. Just explaining the process. What is super important is that sick leave needs to be really sent immediately hmm. uh, on the same day. You cannot just, if you're written off for a week, hold on to it and only hand it to your employer when you get back after a week. That is true. It needs to be done immediately, even when you're feeling like crap. Yes. Another note on the sick leave, the German word would be, the colloquial word would be Krankschreibung, um, that you pretty much written off sick. Or the official word, the abbreviation is AU. Which stands AU, for? Which stands for Arbeitsunfähigkeitsbescheinigung. BAMS. BAMS. <laughs> So if that word rolls around in, uh, with the doctor or the employer, that's what they are asking for. Now, the sick leave is being digitalized slowly. Um, however, just slowly, it's good to know the system of the three papers. If you want more information about sick leave and with every single procedure, um, that's not true. Not up there. Down <laughs> there, we have a written guide just about sick leave. Yes, and this, what we just described, was the process when it's an unexpected sick leave. Now what happens when it's an expected sick leave? Let's say you have a surgery coming up and that is planned. Well, for that, again, you need to inform your employer if you're an employed person. But in advance. In advance, for sure. So for example, I had a surgery done in 2020 and I had a sit with my manager and I told him, look, I have the surgery planned for this time frame. It would take this much to recover. Can I, or like, is it okay? Or um, more like, this is this not can I, it's more like, please, Schedule, schedule my yeah, colleagues yeah. accordingly. Yeah, but staff-wise, is yeah. it possible to do it? Of course. The answer was, of course, absolutely. Take the time. And we planned that in advance. I think like two, three months in advance. So everyone knew. I informed my team. It was a whole thing. And then everyone knew that I think I was off for four, five weeks um, that I had to recover from the surgery. And there, again, you will, again, receive a sick leave. And again, you need to do this whole process of sending one to your employer, your insurance, <laughs> and keeping one for a copy. So how much does it cost to go to the doctor in Germany? So we have to make a distinction that going to the the doctor if you have a public health insurance seems to be free and that you don't pay anything it, it, it is free you don't pay anything at that time at that time however we need to clarify that actually you're paying for this every month you pay half of, for, of your health insurance and your employer if you're employed pays the other half from your paycheck you don't even see that money yes exactly so that's one of the if you are interested in the pay slip and how that works we have a whole video explaining it and it's one of the money like one of the amount of money that you don't see it just goes to health insurance automatically um, by law everyone needs to have public I mean, health insurance in Germany, no one cannot not have it. Uh, just to clarify that going to the doctor is free in some cases. We will talk more detail about it, um, but you are actually paying it month by month. Correct. Yes. So, However, um, now we, we start with the public health insurance. because Private is a little bit different. As a person who holds public health insurance in Germany, you have the right for the following preventative checkups. Yearly, you can go to the dentist. 
every two years you can get your skin checked for skin cancer and officially that only works after the age of 35 but lots of insurances like for example TK, like Technica Krankenkasse already cover it from the age of 18. Now from the age of 18 to 35 you have the right for one-time general checkup and a general checkup in Germany includes a doctor's consultation to look at your family history and other things uh, a blood analysis, a urine analysis, a physical analysis, like to listening to your lungs and heart and taking blood pressure and all those things, as well as a check of your vaccination status. Ooh, can we talk about vaccination status real quick? Yes. Some time ago I asked her like, dude, <laughs> do you have a vaccination record? And I'm like, uh, maybe. <laughs> But if so, it's in my mom's head. I don't know. I'm like, hmm, you actually, in Germany, you know, the little yellow book, the vaccination record is quite important, I would say. Um, so I dragged her to our house arts and I kind of like told her she doesn't have a vaccination record and pretty much gave her like both shoulders the most important vaccines. Yes. And since then, Jen has her little yellow vaccination book. Yes, which in German is called in Impfpass. Correct. Which is super important and I have realized that in Guatemala, we don't have anything like that, which is super interesting. So if you're a part like of my uh, part of the world emerging economy that you don't have this, um, or maybe you do know because you can ask your parents what kind of vaccines you have, but you want to have a German Impfpass, this is one of the things that you can actually talk to your general doctor about and see how you can come about to get one and get the vaccines that are missing or a, a, a booster refresher. or something. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that is like your general right. Now, if you are 35 or older, you have the right for those general checkups every three years. And if uh, once you reach the age of 50 and beyond, you also have the right for a Darmspiegelung, which the English word is procto, pro, 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 proctoscopy, I think. Please help me out here. Now, for women, we of course also have the right for a yearly gynecologist preventative checkup. Some insurances only cover it from the age of 20, but that is yeah, just you need to pretty much test it and ask, ask the doctor or the insurance directly. And from the age between the age of 50 and 70, women also have the right for every two years for additional breast screening, mainly the mammography. Yes. And for men? And for men, if you are 45 years and older, you also have the right for a yearly urologist checkup. Yes, and things that are not included in these checkups that you have access to, but you can, of course, ask for them, you just have to pay for them, are things like ultrasound, if you're not pregnant, <laughs> with a gynecologist, and that could cost between 20 to 30 euros, dentist tooth cleaning, which can cost between 80 to 120 euros, and also staying at the hospital overnight. Interestingly enough, if you're publicly insured, you pay 10 euros a day. In a public college, uh, hospital. Yes, exactly. Food included, which um, uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> now, if you have private health insurance, then the whole system works a bit different because everything that I just said doesn't really apply. I mean, you can do all of those things also. You have the right to, to have all those checkups. However, the whole payment system is very different and highly depends on the tariff that you have because not private doesn't mean private. Private means it depends on what tariff you have. Um, private doesn't mean private. It, like. Private isn't private equals private. You know, like public equals public. Ah, okay, yeah. It private just means you're not public, but whatever is covered depends on ah, your tariff. Got it. That's okay. what I mean. Okay. Yeah. However, the regular procedure is you go to your doctor, you go to whatever treatment that you have, mm -hmm. and you usually also just walk out. However, then you get an invoice sent via snail mail. Maybe some digital ones also via email. I don't know. Um, and then you pay that invoice and then you can ask for those costs back from your private health insurance. Now, some tariffs is quite popular that you, for example, let's say, um, only get money back if you have medical costs exceeding 2000 euros a year. So the first 2000 you pay from your own pocket. Very often the private health insurance is cheaper in your monthly pay than mm -hmm. the public health insurance. And only afterwards you get your money back. Sometimes also, you don't want to hand in any refund because or claim any money back because if you don't have a claim you get like a bonus refund so it really depends on your tariff and you need to kind of like figure that out on your own one more thing about private health insurance is that more expensive treatments are usually included automatically for example the ultrasound at the gyneco gynecologist is always when i was privately insured was always included i didn't even know that it wasn't part of the public health system <laughs> um, so things like this will be included um, and you often also with specialists um, have the chance of getting an appointment faster 
That is a true point. Again, this whole like appointment faster or not, uh, I think we mentioned this in another video, but in my experience, I think if you're persistent and talk to a lot of doctors, you will also find an appointment. Let's say with more ease. With more ease. <laughs> more smoothly. More smoothly. <laughs> Funny. You. We have a written guide also talking about public versus private health insurance. If this seems a bit like, whoa, now I'm a little bit confused, don't worry. It's a very easy system to navigate once you have the right consultation and whatnot, which we provide more details about it in this written guide that we have. In the description below. Yes. <laughs> Good job. So then now, how do we actually get medicine in Germany? And that's pretty easy, really. <laughs> so there's over-the-counter medicine that we talked about. First of all, first of all, let me point out that you can only get medicine in the apotheque or the pharmacy. You cannot get medicine like in the US, you have a Walgreens and a CVS and I don't know what. Here is just the pharmacy. That's the only place you can actually get medicine. Of course, in DM, you can get these medicinal teas. But yeah, that's but like that's not very medicine. Yeah. See how I even did that? Sorry, I should go like this. <laughs> the other one. Oh, sorry. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so once you over the counter uh, medicine, you can definitely buy it at the pharmacy just by walking in and asking for it. Uh, but if you need a prescription medicine, then you need a prescription from your doctor, of course. Um, and this is usually a pink slip. Mm -hmm. And with that one, you go to the pharmacy and then you ask for it. Most of the times they will have this medicine in stock. If they don't, then they will need to order it and it should arrive within one to two days maximum. Sometimes the same day. And yeah. even the same day. It depends on the time that you go, right? And again, it depends on the kind of medicine this is. If you're publicly insured, for example, you would pay, let's say, five euros for the majority of medicine that you get. Um, and if it's a more expensive medicine, then you might pay a little bit more like 10 or 12 euros for, the, for the medicine yeah. that you do. But the five euro thing is um, a whole cost calculation tariff with the uh, health insurance providers that that's like your, your co-insured um, payment pretty much. Yes. Now, very important, the uh, prescription paper, the name in German is Rezept. It's the same word as for a cooking recipe. So I often say, oh, did you get your recipe? And Jen looks at me like, oh, what? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Did you get your prescription? Um, because it's the same word, Rezept. That's super fascinating. Over, overweisung and Rezept, yeah. Could be Have two misleading. meanings depending on the you know, context. context. Exactly. <laughs> now, if you're privately insured for getting medicine, then most likely you will need to pay for it up front. And depending again on your tariff, you would get the money back or it's part of this like amount of money that you spend for your medical thing. Let's say 2000. Your deductible. Deductible is the word that I'm looking for. Thank you. So that highly depends. Again, public, uh, private insured it, because there's so many tariffs and so many ifs and thens that highly depends on your policy. But just to have like a general overview of how things could work. Yes. Now, when you have a recept, you should use it quite fast because it's only valid for like two weeks usually. Uh, sometimes also, for example, you get a recept to get your vaccination. You have to pick it up yourself if the doctor doesn't have it. That often needs cooling. So there we usually go when we have the appointment for the vaccine, we take the recept, go to the apotheker, pick up the vaccine and immediately go to the doctor so the cooling doesn't really get interrupted much. Yes. And if so, if you need to cool it yourself, the apotheker gives you instructions in a special bag for you to keep it cool until you take it home to the fridge. Correct. Another interesting thing is that E-Rezept is coming into <laughs> Germany <Me>. in... E-Rezept? <laughs> it's not E-Rezept. Anyways, it's an electronic recipe, no, no. <laughs> an electronic prescription. That is work in progress. I've seen some apotheca scene like E-Rezept, e we are ready. Um, but nothing is happening so far. So actually, we had a comment the other day that uh, you ordered, um, your, you got your prescription through a video consultation that exists. However, you have to pay for it. It's not covered by the health insurance yet. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like up to you. Um, but you can also, of course, uh, send your recipe um, to an... <laughs> prescription to an online apotheker and then they send you the prescription two days later. For me, that's inconvenient. I would just rather go pick it up at the um, apotheker directly at because the they are, there's an abundance of apotheker. Yes, there's tons of uh, pharmacies anyways. And if you want over-the-counter medicine, we didn't mention this as well, that you don't need a, I wanted to say recipe, prescription. <laughs> you can again use services like MAID, which has worked pretty well. Uh, when During we COVID got sick. specifically, yes. Yeah. Uh, or this uh, easy apotheca, but again, that one takes a few days for you to arrive. If you're curious about 10 things I didn't know about the German health system, then make sure to click on the video that's here on the left to find out more. Until next time, cheers! <laughs> Please help me out, my protoscopy. <clears throat> I don't know, okay. <laughs>